Welcome. Welcome to Fearless with Jason Whitlock. I am Jason Whitlock, your host. Happy Friday. Happy, happy Friday. It's the weekend. And we are, what, now 10 days from Christmas? What could be better than just being 10 days from Christmas, the whole holiday season here coming to a crescendo? Uh, I'm excited about today's show. It's going to be awesome. Steve Kim's going to join me. I'm going to start you out with a little daily dose of Dion. Then we'll transition into some conversation about Ben Roethlisberger and Skip Bayless and Draymond Green suspended for the year. And does the NFL, are they headed towards female general managers? And is that a good thing? So we got a whole lot of ground to cover. I'm going to give you some daily dose of Dion. Uh, before I do anything, though, I want you all to start uh, hitting that five-star rating on Apple, uh, hitting the likes on uh, YouTube, and supporting the show and helping us fight the algorithms. We appreciate all that you do for us. Start there. The other thing you can do is support uh, one of our great sponsors like Nugenics. Guys, are you tired of wasting your money on testosterone booster products that don't work? I don't blame you. That's why our sponsor, Nugenics Total T, lets you try before you buy. Get a complimentary sample when you text 231231 and enter the keyword fearless. Are you really ready to lose your shape, your muscle, your energy? As men age, we lose testosterone, the man hormone, the source of our fire. But Nugenics Total T boosts free and total testosterone levels to help you feel better at work, in the gym, and in the bedroom. There's nothing like Nugenics Total T and nothing better. Nugenics is the number one doctor recommended brand and the number one selling testosterone boosting brand at GNC and Walmart. Nugenics Total T can help re-energize your life and help you get back the powerful, confident, good looking warrior you used to be. And if you're not totally satisfied, Nugenics will refund a hundred percent of your purchase price plus shipping and processing. Now get a complimentary bottle of Nugenics Total T when you text 231231 and enter the keyword fearless. Text now and get a bottle of Nugenics Thermo X, our newest and most powerful fat incinerator ever with key ingredients to help you lose fast and get lean fast, absolutely free. That's text 231231, enter the keyword fearless, 231231, keyword fearless. Now, let me get uh, to my fire starter, which is a daily dose of Deion Sanders. And I want to read to you all, uh, this is from the New York Post, but it's also on the University of Colorado website. Uh, Colorado creates Deion Sanders-inspired primetime course. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not. Harvard has a, this is from the New York Post, Harvard has a course about Taylor Swift, and now Colorado University students can take a class on Coach Prime Deion Sanders. Sanders was named head football coach of the team nearly a year ago and has completely revamped the program, turning it from the last place team in the Pac-12 to the last place team in the Pac-12. It's been unbelievable what Dion has done. How can you blame Colorado for not wanting to celebrate that and teach kids how to be just like Deion Sanders, a last place coach in the Pac-12? Uh, the football coach and Hall of Fame football player has now inspired a course at the Boulder, Colorado School. Primetime, public performance and leadership will be offered to students in the College of Media Communication Information at Colorado University next semester. This is what the uh, website uh, says about the, how it describes the uh, course. Intercollegiate athletics and college athletes experience are undergoing fundamental transformations as athletes gain control of their name, image, and likeness and begin monetizing their personal brands for the first time. This course considers collegiate and professional athletes as a special kind of public figure whose public personas can create opportunities to earn income from sponsors and commercial interests, but also as influential advocates for social justice and cultural influence. Y'all have wondered and have complained. Some, not, not some of you have complained. 
most of you have not complained. Most of you have enjoyed my daily doses of Dion. The Dion groupies have complained. Why are you talking about Dion Sanders? Why you need to get up off of Dion? You don't like black people. Now, I'm trying to point out to you the level of idolatry that's being thrown at Dion Sanders. He's been made into an idol, into a cult-like figure, to the point that a major university, after the guy loses, what, eight of his last nine games, finishes the season four and eight, finishes in last place in the Pac-12, after the man made a fool of himself throughout the entire year. Do, do we have Justin and someone yell at me when this is ready? Call up the, uh, the 30-second Daily Dose of Dion commercial we did uh, where, you know, he's, do you believe in, anyway, mocking Dion. When, when that's ready, someone let me know because I, I, I want to play that. But we've put this guy on a pedestal after he made a fool of himself. After he opened the season playing the race card and telling everybody I'm un everybody's uncomfortable because I'm black and, and I walk my walk and talk my talk and oh, I'm about to get comfortable up in here and Ed Werder, do you believe in me now? And on and on and on. Oh, I'm taking this personal. How dare anybody question anything about me and my team? I don't know who my starting center is. I'm throwing the offensive lineman under a bus. All of this, but Dion is now the role model for leadership after what we just witnessed? Really? After what we just witnessed? And, and if he is the role model for leadership, if the celebration of Dion and the celebration of the head coach and everything being about the head coach and the head coach's son, if that's the... the, the role model that we want all young people mimicking and learning about. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. And I get that all these universities, from the Taylor Swift to, I was looking up, Georgetown University taught a course uh, about Jay-Z. This is somewhat commonplace where we take these pop culture substance-less celebrities and act like, oh, they've got something to teach our young people on college campuses. They are the role models our kids should follow. P play the, <laughs> play, this is, I, I want everybody to know, this is who we're putting up on a pedestal and, and now university, hey, uh, send your kids, he can earn three uh, credit hours learning how to be just like Dion. Play this clip. This is who Dion is. What's up, bro? You believe that? Of all the you, you, Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, no. Do you believe that? They should offer him $100 million today for, for the next three years. It's a nine-win season for me. And I'm about to get comfortable in a minute. I'm about to get comfortable in a minute. I got receipts. I know who they are. All recruits. I'm not hot to try. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't coming no more. Uh, I'm just, if Dion had the self-confidence that he proclaims that he has, and he does not, because people with real self-confidence don't do what Dion d does, but if he legitimately had it, he would have told the university, hey, pump the brakes on that class. Don't, don't, don't do it. That's embarrassing. I just went four and eight. We just finished in last place. Uh, let me win something first. Uh, how about make it to a bowl game? Six and six, make it to a bowl game. Let me crawl up out of last place in our conference before we start teaching kids how to be the next Deion Sanders. If he had real confidence, that's what he would say. He, he would be embarrassed by this. But when you don't have real confidence, when your 
shattered, fractured, untreated delusion. When you're a narcissist. Yeah. Let him let him teach a course about me. Let 60 minutes do two profiles on me in a 12 month span. Do all you can to hype me up because, again, I'm not really sure I'm going to accomplish anything in this head coaching space at the Power Five level. And I know many of you are out there going, well, look at the recruiting class. He's addressing it. And it's in that New York Post story. It's like, oh, Dion's done nothing wrong. Uh, you know, he's, he's getting all these great recruits. He's He's getting these offensive linemen. Everything's going to be better next year. Y'all still think football's that easy. Just plug and play. And whoever's got the most best players, they win all the game. It, it, it doesn't matter how many guys they flip in the portal and the handful of high school recruits. Georgia, Alabama, all these teams... All these teams have more talent, more depth than Colorado. And so it's not all just about talent. It's do you put that talent in an environment where a team can succeed on a consistent basis, where a team isn't plagued by shooting its own self in the foot time after time after time. Dion's team was the most penalized and the most undisciplined team in all of Power 5 football. That's the culture that Dion set. Are they going to teach that in the class? That Dion's alleged great leadership led his team to be the most penalized and most undisciplined team in all of college football? That's a big part of the reason why they lost so many games. I saw another story on Dion uh, from a quarterback. That, and, and I know many of you, some of you, not many, some of you know nothing about how college football actually operates, and you think that coaches just cut players all the time. That had not been the standard. Dion has ushered that in as the standard, that you just get rid of players so that you can replace him. And, and Dion has ushered in the standard of like, oh, uh, if there's a group of guys not performing well, I'll just call them out in press conferences as long as their last name isn't Sanders. I'll just throw my offensive lineman under the bus all year long. And I'll just replace them. Dion has set that standard. This is the kind of great leadership that Colorado is going to be teaching its students about. And so the other story I saw uh, was... This former Colorado quarterback, I think his name is Maddox Kopp, who ended up transferring to Miami of Ohio but had to sit out all year, he got to testify yesterday about these restrictions on the transfer portal. That if you transfer twice, you got to sit out a year. And, and Maddox Kopp is making the arguments like, hey, look, I transferred the first time under Carl Durrell uh, to, to play for Carl Durrell in Colorado. And then Carl Durrell got fired. And then Deion Sanders showed up and told me and everybody else, hit the portal, leave. He put a gun to our heads and forced us to transfer. And as you saw, the two guys I had on the show that, that came in here and talked about their experiences with Deion. And as you heard the Owen Carey explain how he was brought into a meeting and in less than 90 seconds was ushered out of the University of Colorado. That had not been standard operating procedure. Well, anyway, with this Maddox cop, because he had transferred previously, he had to sit out the entire 2023 season. And I know, it, it, oh, they only won one game, so it's justified in your mind. Mistreating kids, ruining their college experience, who cares? Dion's got to win games, and this whole thing is about Dion Sanders. It's not about the kids. It's about Deion Sanders. And so if Maddox Cop had a horrible experience because Deion came in and told them, and this is according to Maddox Cop, told them during spring practice last year that as a quarterback, 
you told the whole QB room, your job isn't to compete. Your job isn't to prepare yourself to play. Your job is to make Shadour Sanders the best quarterback he can be. That's not what 18, 19, 20, 21-year-old kids want to hear. They want to compete. And by competing, that will make Shadour better. That will make them better. And then they want a fair opportunity. But Dion came in and said, I got my boy. He's Louis Luggage. He's going to be the quarterback. You guys either transfer or commit to making Shadour better. I get it. Dion is... Uh, this black icon who can do no wrong because his skin is black and because he wears gold chains and because you think he's popular. He can mistreat young people. He can abuse young people. He can run them out, ruin their childhood experiences. It's, oh, that's a pity party. Uh, you know, they were 1 in 11 a year before. They needed to get kicked off the team. That's the world you want to live in. Your standards are based off of, well, Dion's black and he's popular and he needs to do that. And Dion's important. He's a symbol. <sighs> That's why I talked about Dion all year. He's setting a terrible precedent for college sports. He's normalizing things. And it, well, Dion didn't do it. He didn't start name, image, and likeness. He didn't create this system. He blah, blah, blah. He's exploiting the system and normalizing behavior that is not good for the long-term health of college football and does a disservice to the young people involved in college football. It's all about Dion and his son Shadur. And we just had another former Colorado football player come out and voice that opinion that should be obvious to everyone else. And that's why I call him Coach Pee Wee. He's a Pee Wee football coach. It's all about his son, Shadur, and his other son, Shiloh. And if any of you have had any experience with Pee Wee football, coached by a dad who favors his son, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And it doesn't matter what color you are. If your kids have been involved in sports, you've dealt with, the, you've dealt with these type of unfair Pee Wee football coaches who build the entire team around their son. It's not fair, it's not right. Not a standard. I could care less how popular Dion is. That's why I've spent all year pointing it out. Uh, we're going to bring Steve Kim on, talk a little bit more about uh, Dion Sanders, but talk about some other things going on. Ben Roethlisberger taking some shots at the Pittsburgh Steelers and Mike Tomlin. Skip Bayless is 2024, perhaps the end of Undisputed and Skip Bayless. We'll see. Uh, before I go, though, I want to talk to you guys about uh, our favorite sponsor, Preborn. As the left ramps up their efforts to abort babies, it's time to ramp up our efforts to save babies. Why not include saving a baby's life on your Christmas lift? And because of our partnership with Preborn, you can do just that. Preborn is an organization that has rescued over 270,000 babies. You can help us rescue even more babies this year. Every day, Preborn's network of clinics rescues 200 babies as they compete head to head with the abortion giants. They offer an abortion-minded woman a free ultrasound. Once she meets her baby for the first time and hears that heartbeat, her baby's chance at life more than doubles. For just $28, you can save a life. And now, through a match, your tax-deductible gift is doubled, too. And because Preborn supports both mothers and babies with diapers, car seats, counseling, and more for up to two years, you are offering double the blessings. Now is the time to put your year-end write-offs to work. Just dial pound 250 and say the keyword baby. That's pound 250, the keyword baby. Or go to preborn.com slash fearless. That's preborn.com slash fearless. When you do, email me at fearlessplayshow at gmail. Uh, Steve Kim, the Korean Cosell. Next.
When I holla pee, we that mean I suck. Manipulate my players, then I get them stuck. Take the corner back for a Colorado bucks. Do you believe that? We ran out of love. I'm 56, sacking like I'm 30. Worship me like an idol, cause I'm worthy. Drop rose for a snow hose, wasn't pretty. Overplaying Travis Hunter, did him dirty. Should do a crying daddy, why they hurt me? Setting sack record sight, getting blurry. Players decommitting, coaches start to scurry. Run into the transfer portal in a hurry. Your favorite black coach, I do no wrong. Get them wins up, oh, I won't be here for long. Call them ghetto rappers and get us in a zone. Who ready? I'm ready, now play my theme song. If you see me, then you know it's about a bug. Not about my players, I don't give up. I'm the big dog, should do my little pug. Diamonds on his rich, Sandy, hold it up. When I holler pee, we that mean I suck. Manipulate my players, then I get them stuck. Take the corner back for Colorado Buffs. Do you believe that? We ran out of love. Call me Coach Prime, yeah, I'm the chosen one. Double threat in my time, touchdown, home run. The PWD high fans are really dumb. Getting all this recognition, and it is really fun. What would make you think I care about what you think of me? I got teams running scared, Coach Pee Started from the bottom, and then we won three. I did this without them, cause it's about me. Your favorite black coach, I do no wrong. Get them wins up, or I won't be here for long. Call them ghetto rappers to get us in a zone. Who ready? I'm ready. Now play my theme song. If you see me, then you know it's about a book. Not about my players, I don't give up. I'm the big dog, should build my little pup. Diamonds on his wrist, Sandy, hold it up. When I holla pee, we that mean I suck. Manipulate my players, then I get them stuck. Take the corner back for a Colorado buck. Do you believe that? We ran out of luck. For years, Hollywood has been lacking when it comes to stories of redemption. Movies and TV shows have trended towards the anti-hero, the flawed person who makes no effort to change and just becomes worse and worse as the story goes on. Well, here's some great news. The Blind, the true story of the Robertson family, is now available for purchase on Blaze TV. Maybe you've made a mess of your life. Maybe someone you love is in a dark place. Maybe all the above. If you or someone you know feels beyond redemption, you need to watch this movie. You'll see there is always hope, always. The Blind takes you on an incredible journey through the life of Phil Robertson, giving you an intimate look into the man behind the legend and the trials, the triumphs, and the values that have shaped him through the years. While The Blind wasn't a Blaze Media production, since Phil is such a big part of our Blaze TV family, we wanted to make sure you had the opportunity to stream it here. Because it isn't ours, we can't include it as part of the subscription package. But if you'd rather purchase it and stream it here rather than Apple or Amazon, we wanted to make sure the opportunity was there. Don't miss this opportunity to own The Blind, a Phil Robertson story on Blaze TV. Buy it today at blazetv.com slash the blind for just $19.99. That's blazetv.com slash the blind. Cosell, I'm just going to get straight to it. Uh, if you were a University of Colorado student, would you sign up for the Coach Primetime class? <laughs> huh. Yeah. It'd be fun. Who needs arithmetic, English, history? geometry you know and it, it, it's probably more useful than any civics class or you know uh gender studies so yeah i would honestly it'd be a fun class and look now would i make it my uh primary course of study would it be one of my majors no but it would, might be a fun class something you could fall asleep to copy notes yeah why wouldn't i it's a big deal and so would you take it before or after underwater basket weaving to get your GPA up? Because isn't that what this is? This is just a class for uh, Colorado football players? It might be. But again, if you want to be a football school, you got to have a commitment. 
Now, do you want to have a winning football team or not? Or do you want to have a bunch of scholars that's going to go three and eight? Uh, Jason, would you get off of prime time? I get it. We're doing the Daily Dion thing. They are trying to act like every other football power across the country. Uh, you're being a little unfair here. All we want is a level playing field for Coach Prime. So, yes, that might be interesting. Seriously, come on. You didn't get sold on. At Ball uh, State, there were no classes that were just like all the football players said, hey, guys, sign up for this guy. Of this course, guy's I took them all. Then, I took them all. How do you think I graduated in 2.3 or 2.23? Right. So, 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 Jason, what is the problem? What is the problem? The, pro the problem is Maddox Cop. What do you think about that story about that kid, quarterback? He's already transferred once. He had right. to now sit out when Prime told him to get the hell out of Dodge. What okay. Prime, Prime's not showing any leadership. You don't feel sorry. It's it's football. It's supposed to be about the kids. No, no, no. Football is a business. Now hold on. His behavior towards his players, running guys out, and I know that happens all across the country. We have to be honest about it. Those are two separate things. But a specific class that looks like it's designed to move people forward. And as Jerry Tarkanian once said, hey, guys, hey, guys, um, you're a class attendance. I'm very, very concerned about your eligibility. He didn't say education. He said eligibility. <laughs> so <laughs> it's the same thing. Underwater basket weaving or any of these other classes, they, they, they take place and, you know, it is what it is. I, I mean, look, Dion's trying to rebuild that whole thing, and it's got a whole new offensive line, Jason. Help is on the way, all right? Nate Solder may not be walking through the door, but they have four or five new ones that are. So how do you teach leadership by showcasing someone who hasn't shown any leadership skills? Uh, boy. Yeah, boy, you're trying to get huh, – there's going to be some upset people on YouTube, Bill. See, this is your <laughs> gift. See, I know what you're doing here. This is the generous spirit of Jason Whitlock. He is providing more content for all those YouTubers out there, the G, uh, the Deion Sanders jock sniffing coalition. Hey, guys, happy holidays. Merry Christmas to all of you. <laughs> but you're right. And I, and I do have a question. Is he gonna is he gonna have a class dedicated to like if you're dealing with people that criticize you, is he gonna bring out the uh, the footage with Tim McCarver and actually bring out a water bucket and teach how to like <laughs> pour it on it? <laughs> you know, but I mean I'm interested. Um, you're right. Look, do I think he's the greatest leader in college football? No. But as a football player or as a student that has a few credits to go, that's skating along, getting senioritis. Would I be curious about that class? Yeah, I actually would be. All right, I'm 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 beating a dead horse with you. I'm I'm not going to get you to join me in beating up on Dion. So let me move on. Uh, <laughs> I want to play Ben Roethlisberger. You talk and, and Ben Roethlisberger breeding up a successful coach, a coach that's won a Super Bowl and and has never had a losing season, as far as I know. Uh, ben Roethlisberger says the, the Steeler way is basically dead or on life support. I think we have a clip of that. Let's watch Roethlisberger. Yeah, first play the ones about the Steeler way is, is dead. It seems like something that I said and got, you know, one of the, the, the leaders on the team kind of got on me for saying that I felt that certain guys on the team aren't in it for the team, they're in it for themselves. Well, now some of the guys on the team are saying the same thing. Yeah. So maybe I wasn't too far off when I said that. But like I know profit. that I'm retired. I just don't, you know, I'm not yeah. in the locker room. I get it. But it just feels like that. It just feels like that's something that's kind of been lost on this team a little bit. Is you, you, it feels like the Steeler way is just not. Listen, you've got some great leaders on defense. Don't get me wrong. Um but and just, TJ and Minka, but but you've got two sides of a football. That's what I'm saying. It's just a team. Um, yeah, who's who is that guy? Who is that guy? If it's not the quarterback, because obviously that is that is just mm -hmm. it's a variable right now. Yeah. Who's that guy? You don't have it on offense. I mean, you can bring a veteran football player in. Okay, Mason Cole, um, um, Isaac. I mean, you can bring guys in that are veterans, but they're not. Just because they're a veteran football player doesn't mean that they're a Steeler. Like they know mm -hmm. what it is to be a Pittsburgh Steeler. Um, you know, when I left, I was kind of the last guard there, obviously. Like, 
Pouncey left the year before, Dave left. Like, those guys left, and it was like I was the last one. There was such an age gap for me and everybody else on offense that there just wasn't that Steeler – tradition passed down and i just you have it on defense don't get me wrong but you don't have it on offense right now and it's, it's just making it really hard you're not seeing in my opinion the toughness on offense hmm. mm. uh your reaction to those thoughts he's not wrong but you know what the blank way is for any franchise the patriot way the Steeler way the ram way it's having a quarterback when you have a quarterback that's really good like a ben roethlisberger who'll one day be in canton that's the Steeler way. Have a good quarterback. I mean, I don't want to say it's that simple, but it's kind of that simple. And the issue that I, I truly think Roethlisberger feels a lot of sympathy for Mike Tomlin, who is a Hall of Fame coach, and is trying his best to piece this together. But when you had the stability at quarterback that Big Ben gave you for a decade and a half, and then you, you pick a guy in Kenny Pickett in the first round who I thought was overdrafted because that particular season that I remember, that was not a great class for quarterbacks. So you end up taking him. He's a local guy that played at Pitt and an older prospect. So I thought his ceiling was relatively limited in terms of how far this can go. And then you have guys like George Pickens and that other wide receiver who, quite frankly, are Antonio Brown minus the production at times, right? And it's not even their fault because, again, it goes back to not having a quarterback. Jason, it's just my opinion. Mike Tomlin has a lot of good years coaching. He looks relatively young. He still has a great spirit towards him. But, Jason, doesn't it seem like even his time in Pittsburgh seems to be coming to an end? <sighs> I'm not sure. I, I don't the, – the, I, I want to – before I even get to the Tomlin part of that, Steve, let me finish up here about Rossberg. You make an interesting point that the Steeler way, the Patriot way, is Tom right. Brady and Ben Roethlisberger. Do you think that's what Ben Roethlisberger is suggesting? It's like, <laughs> hey, Peter, the Steelers can't do it without me. Uh, we're seeing that in New England with Tom Brady, and he's trying to say, look, you got the same thing going on over here, but the Steelers are 7-6. and six. You know, they're, the Patriots are what, 3-10? and 10? They are, and look, that sounds, if that is the case, if that's what he meant, and I'm not so sure that he did, but I, that's just my opinion, does it come off as a self-aggrandizing statement? Yeah. Guess what? A lot of those can be true. When you have a franchise quarterback, you are a hundred uh, IQ points smarter. That's the God's honest truth. Uh, like, like, let me give you the example of Aaron Rodgers. Look at some of the assistant coaches during his tenure at Green Bay that got head coaching jobs, like uh, Ben McAdoo. And then there's that guy at Miami, I believe, right? There, there's been a string of coaches. Joe Philbin. Philbin, right? And then also Nathaniel Hackett got a job from it. Did they suddenly become any dumber because they switched jobs or was it not having Aaron Rodgers? Honestly, the quarterbacks really matter nowadays because it's such a central component of your success. And it, they've called it a quarterback league. But if you're the Pittsburgh Steelers, I guarantee you, you look back as even as much as Big Ben declined the last three, four years. There are certain weeks, though, he gave you much more of a chance to keep you in a ball game than the current situation right now in Pittsburgh. So now let's move to the Mike Tomlin part of this. And Roethlisberger, uh, bad mouth, their use of timeouts and clock management and basically called out the coaching staff. Let's play the clip. I think when we didn't have timeouts at the end of the game because we had to, we had to use them on debating on going on a fourth down, yeah. we had to use them on a um, – uh, like a, a play clock, you know, after a, you know, yep. we, when we have to use timeouts, you can use timeouts. Like we, we'd, we'd have this debate. I'd have this conversation. I don't know if they still do. I would have conversations with coach Bruce, with coach Randy, like, Hey, listen, if we're in and, and coach too, Tom a little bit too, you know, when that play clock's running down, okay. First half, say the play clock's running down. You've got three timeouts. Coach, would you rather me take the timeout and use the timeout? Or do you want to just take the five-year penalty and keep the timeout? 
first half, you know what? Take the timeout. Yeah. But in the second half, having timeouts is huge. Yeah. Sometimes, I know it sounds crazy, sometimes it's better to take the five-yard delay a game than it is to waste a timeout. Sure. Because at the end of that game, if we had one more timeout, we, we, got, we have another chance. And so when you, when you lose timeouts because of, like, silly penalties, too many men on the field, not enough men on the field, I mean, just all this stuff, like, you can't afford in the second half of games to burn silly timeouts and not to have them late in the game. And so, to me, that, that is, that's bad, it's, it's a bad coaching. Yeah. Mm. Mm. That sounds like a direct shot at Mike Tomlin and the coaching Maybe it staff. Is. You know what? I'm enjo- I have not heard that from Big Ben. I'm going to have to start tuning into this. He is saying some blunt stuff, and I like it. He's not being Mr. Milk Toast. He's not being Barry Banal. He's actually going out there and saying some hard truths that a lot of good coaches, even good ones like Tomlin, they do not understand game and clock management, that sometimes time or timeouts are more important than yards. I love what he said because a lot of that I agree with that you can be a really good coach fundamentally, system-wise, philosophy, getting guys to buy in, or be a great motivator. But the way you manage a game once or twice a year, it makes a huge difference. And the fact that he's willing to be so blunt and honest about what some of his issues were, Jason, isn't that what we want from athletes and that when they become analysts, that they're not housemen, that they actually just lay it out there and tell us the truth? I, I I think uh, we may need to start calling Ben Roethlisberger's show Funky Friday, get him some cigars and one of those clown hats, uh, and make him Cam Newton 2.0. But so let me ask you this, Steve. Let's say you're the Carolina Panthers. Would you go all in trying to get Mike Tomlin to be your head coach? If and should Mike Tomlin be looking? to perhaps say, I mean, man, I had a great run here in Pittsburgh. It's probably gotten a little stale. Let me move on. Hmm, that's an interesting one because Carolina obviously is looking for a CEO on the sidelines, and, and they did invest into a quarterback that I, I don't know. I, I, he may run into the same problem because when it came down to C.J. Stroud or Bryce Young, right now C.J. Stroud looks like the guy you should have taken. And I'm not calling this – Peyton Manning, Ryan Leaf. It's a little bit too early to say that, and it's not really fair. But the Panthers, I, didn't they give up their draft choice to the Bears or something? And so they may not even have their top five pick. I, you know, I'm not so Would sure. Mike Tomlin, should Mike Tomlin be angling for the Chargers job? How about that? Yes, because you got a guy by the name of uh, Herbert who's a lot like Big Ben, big, strapping, strong arm guy with a lot of talent, you know, and um, I said this to Mario on our show because he's a Charger fan. He's good friends with the Spanos. He's the only person from San Diego that still likes that guy, right? Um, And we decided the Chargers need to get, get this, a real traditional football coach. None of this analytic stuff, none of this new age stuff, not a guy trying to be cool like uh, Mike McDaniel. I've been watching the Hard Knocks with the Dolphins. There's so many things that just get on my nerve. But I want a guy that belongs, that that believes in physical play, tackling in practice as much as you can. And get this, Jason, from your own 18-yard line, punting the ball. Yes, if you said to me, Steve, your Los Angeles Chargers could have Mr. Mike Tomlin, I'd say, you know what? Thumbs up. I would endorse that move. Yeah, that would be a great move for Tomlin. I, I, and I would want to go someplace that has a quarterback. It might it would be a good look for the Chargers, too, bringing someone with his pedigree and his success could perhaps help him sell some tickets. I don't know if I'm Justin Herbert, if I want another defensive coach. I think that's been part of the problem with uh, Brandon Staley. Uh, if I'm Herbert, I want an offensive-minded coach. I, I, I want what mm. Sean Payton – has been able to do in Denver and for Russell, Russell Wilson, fix some of those problems. But, uh, Steve, I want to move on, but let me take care of one of our great sponsors here, uh, possibly the most authentic uh, sponsor we have. You guys know I started taking liver health formula more than two years ago. 
about a year ago, they jumped on board as a sponsor, unbeknownst to me. I'm so glad they did. As we approach the new year, it's time to think about becoming a healthier, more energetic version of yourself in 2024. If you've been dealing with low energy or have gained some extra pounds, you can't seem to shake off. The issue might be your liver. Your liver is super important for staying healthy. It does more than 500 important jobs. It probably does more work than all of the Democrats put together. Actually, it could probably run our, as our vice president. So you got to help it run faster because one in three Americans are now living with a sluggish fatty liver and all of that booze with carb packed potatoes you're going to have during this Christmas holiday won't help it. Listen, nobody wants to feel tired and sleepy. Everybody wants to have the same energy, same kind of energy that crowds for a Trump rally do. So you better get prepared for 2024 because it's going to be a crazy year and you need all of the energy you can get. One thing that could help is liver health formula. It has 11 powerful botanicals that help recharge and protect your liver. Go get it today and get a free bottle of blood sugar formula to reduce sugar cravings. Visit GetLiverHelp.com Jason now to claim your free bonus gift. Don't miss this chance to start the year feeling your best again. That's GetLiverHelp.com slash Jason. You know what, guys? I'm going there right now uh, because I went to grab some this morning, and I need to re-up. I need to re-up like uh, I'm on the wire. I'm going to GetLiverHelp.com right now. Uh-oh. Let me. I forgot to slash Jason. I want to get the credit. Anyway, let me roll back out to Steve. As Oh, look at that. A big, pretty picture of me pops up when you do that. Uh, Steve? Uh, there's talk that the ratings are so bad for Skip Bayless mm, mm, and mm, Undisputed. Mm. Uh, I think Awful Announcing and uh, my guy Mike McCarthy over at Front Office Sports have been writing about uh, how bad uh, Undisputed has been getting slaughtered in the ratings. I think in the two, three, four week stretch, First Take is getting five times the ratings as Undisputed. Mm -hmm. First Take's averaging like 500 some odd thousand and Undisputed 105,000, uh, which is raising questions. Uh, could 2024 uh, be the final year for uh, Skip Bayless? Do you, do you see that happening perhaps? Look, this is a production based, not business, but world. And I just wondered to draw the analogy. So is Skip Bayless, Bill Belichick, while Shannon, ironically, is Tom Brady, Brady uh, in terms of their split? And, you know, it, it's interesting. I still watch clips of Undisputed, specifically the segments with Michael Irvin. The, the other stuff I really don't care about. And, Jason, I think there's a problem with that particular show, the way it's constructed. There's too many hosts. I, I think less is more. I, I'm not really interested in what Richard Sherman or Keyshawn Johnson have to say all that much, nothing against them. And I know that Michael Irvin may not be available five days a week. But Skip Bayless, and I think we talked about this a couple months ago as they trotted out this new and improved lineup. Skip Bayless has basically become almost an outsider on his own show. I mean, when they're doing the, the, the four-way discussion on the desk, Skip, for large segments, says nothing. Um, and then once a week, he praises Deion Sanders to show everyone that he's not racist. And I'm like, okay, that, that got old. <laughs> <laughs> or he says something else that basically the subtext is, hey, guys, I really like you guys. I'm down. And it's like, oh, okay. And so it just doesn't work. And, and by the way, Jason, he's had a long, illustrious career. Eventually, all things do come to an end. Yeah, I, I don't think it's about the debate partners as much as I don't think Skip was able to evolve past debate and uh, a character. You know, he still takes this debate thing very, very seriously. And we're now in a new era of conversation. Uh, people are tired of the, the debate thing because, one, they think it's fraudulent. Like, do they really believe or did they just take opposite sides? 
And, and, and so, yes, the ratings have backed up uh, since Shannon Sharp left, but, but the ratings weren't great when Shannon Sharp was okay. there. That's, That's true. the truth. What, what has been significant, though, is Shannon Sharp going to ESPN and the rise that has taken place with First Take when Shannon Sharp's on the air. So I'm not trying to knock Shannon Sharp. He has an impact. But, but I, I think there was always a ceiling on Skip Bayless when he moved over to FS1. And, and Shannon just actually lowered the ceiling by crushing him over the DeMar Hamlin situation and then you know, basically getting him in the racial crosshairs where Skip is now groveling and pretending to be best friends with Lil Wayne and other rappers. And it all just screams inauthentic. And I think what has happened here in the YouTube space, there's more authenticity, there's more grittiness and rawness, and that's people are bringing those expectations. And you got a 70-year-old guy sitting on TV acting like he's best friends with Lil Wayne. And, you know, as soon as I get off, off air, I'm going to go smoke some chronic with Lil Wayne. No one's buying it. And, and, you know, him with the gold chain, it's, all, it's a gimmick that people aren't buying. And so, yeah, I, I, I would think 2024 could be it for Skip Bayless, but I'm not sure if FS1 feels like it has a better option. And th they're so all in it, it, it's no different than the conversation we were having about Dion. Colorado's so all in on Dion Sanders that they'll never admit that, that, you know, it's going to take a lot <laughs> for them to admit, like, he ain't the guy. And I think the same thing is true at FS1 as it relates to Skip Bayless. It's going to take even more for them to acknowledge, like, hey, this 70-year-old guy we're trying to pass off as if he's still moving the needle. Uh, I, I don't think they're going to acknowledge or, or come off that. Yeah, so... You know, look, as little as I watch ESPN outside of certain live events, I watch FS1 even less. I mean, and that's the reality. And, and there has been a history going all the way back. Uh, I'm talking about during their glory days of the 1980s when, when that network was best known for Chris Berman, a much younger Dick Vitale, Tom Meese, Dan Patrick, Keith Olbermann, that very few guys, because uh, I don't want to make this a blanket statement, but generally, when you left that four-letter network, it was actually hard to elevate your brand. I mean, certain people did it, like Robin Roberts, right? But a lot of other people found out, like, man, this network's kind of important. It's an iconic brand. Um, and with, with Skip Bayless, I'll be honest with you, all I do is once in a while on my YouTube feed, the Michael Irvin segments will come up. They're generally about 12 to 25 minutes. And I'll watch that. And outside of that, maybe one or two of those a show. Um, Jason, I, I certainly am not a regular viewer of that program. Uh, I want to talk about uh, Draymond Green. He's been suspended indefinitely <laughs> mm. uh, because of his history of, of annex and bad behavior and his explanation for why he hit nursing is absolutely ridiculous and stupid. But I think we got a little compilation video of Draymond, uh, a low lights tape of Draymond Green. Let's watch and enjoy uh, some of J Draymond Green's low light moments. <laughs> yeah, there he is kicking. I think, is that Rudy Gobert maybe he did that too? I can't remember. Uh, but he's, he's, oh, Rudy Gobert, oh, look at that. Mm. Hmm. That's LeBron James. Yeah, uh, not good. I, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's pretty. Anyway, so anyway, we'll, we'll just talk as this video plays. The, the Draymond, I don't know if he, I don't think I would compare him to Dennis Rodman. I, I would compare him more to, I'll go away from basketball and call him the Vontez Burfick of... <laughs> Mm. of the NBA. And, and eventually, Burford got in a lot of trouble, I, I thought a little bit unfairly, 
uh, and was singled out. But as it relates to Draymond, I, I, I think he's earned this reputation. He's earned this indefinite suspension. He's ruining this Warriors basketball team that they invested a lot in. They were trying to give it one more run for a fifth title. It's not going to happen. Uh, your thoughts on the indefinite suspension of Draymond Green? I've never actually heard of an indefinite suspension. Uh, I mean, generally, the the league head or the commission said, hey, you get X amount of games and, and that's it. Uh, I don't I know. Thought I thought Kyrie I, got one. Didn't Kyrie get an indefinite suspension? Did he? Okay, whatever. But I'm just saying, it's just like, I don't know what to say. It's just like, I have a question, though, in all seriousness. How much is his play different than the NBA Detroit Pistons of the late 80s, early 90s, the bad boys, or the Pat Riley Game of Force Knicks? How, how much is it really different, well, though? Ho, ho, well, ho, hold for one second, Steve. I mean, the key thing you said there was the 1980s Detroit Pistons. Right. And the 1990s New York Knicks. Do, do, do you not have a calendar in front of you? Do you not know what year this is? We're well, living I, in this kinder, gentler, softer I, America. I, I am with you on that. And I, you know, again, I'm not a Draymond Green fan per se, but to be so horrified by this and look, that right there is a cheap shot. I, I, just lo I love his speech after this. Hey, you know me. If I would have done it on purpose, I wouldn't apologize. But th that one right there, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, okay. I, I think that's when Adam Aluminum said, okay, we got to suspend this guy. Uh, let us figure this out. Uh, but, I mean, is, isn't he just basically black lane beer? I mean, again, I know. I know the calendar. I know it's 2023. I get it. But isn't he just basically brother lane beer at this point? I hated that guy. He I like the black lane beer comparison or – any of those Celtics players or whatever, but again, it's 2023, Steve. You have, to, and again, I know I'm mixing up the sports here, but you have to ask permission to sack a quarterback. We're, we're in a different era. I, I, I get that, yeah, he reminds you of Lambeer. I don't think people are horrified. I think people are like, Draymond, quit being stupid, man. You're hurting your team. You're hurting yourself. Uh, they, you, the, the Warriors put a lot into this season. Now you're indefinitely suspended, which again, didn't, uh, I think Ja Morant, didn't he get an indefinite suspension for a time? And, and so he's undermining the chances of Steph Curry and Klay Thompson, perhaps competing for another championship. And, and I, so I don't think people are horrified. They're more just dumbfounded. Like how long are you going to be stupid, man? And not adjust to what the league is now. I think it'd be a bigger deal to me if I gave a damn about the NBA. Uh, I really don't. I actually find some of this amusing because he's such a disruptor. Like last night, I actually put it up on Twitter. I, I put up some old Michael Jordan highlights. Wow, now that was basketball. And the stuff that he went through, he used to face a Draymond Green on every team. I, I mean, I, I, like I'm just telling you, right? people say, hey, you want to watch some the NBA Jordan games? rules, yeah. Well, no, no, but, but look. When people, because I've been asked to go to like Laker games, hey Steve, we have a suite, and I'm just like, nah, I'm good. I'm just gonna punch up YouTube, get some old Jordan highlights. It's just so unappealing to me that at least with Draymond Green as someone that covers boxing, at least there's a chance a fight might break out, and then I'd be like, hey, that's pretty good. Now Jake Paul, this is interesting. Jake Paul, who I think is having a fight uh, Friday night. He actually said and reached out to Draymond. Draymond, let's make you a fight. I'd be like, you know what? Have Draymond Green against some YouTube influencer. I, I might, I would actually find that more interesting than a regular season NBA game. Yeah, sue me. It's just, just the truth. <laughs> All right. Well, let me see what you think about this, and and I'll let you get to your weekend. Uh, NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell, right, says mm -hmm. it'd be fantastic. Oh, yeah. To have a female general manager in the National Football League, <laughs> and it's just <laughs> around the corner. Uh, let's watch Roger Goodell when asked about how soon are we going to see a woman as a general manager of an NFL team. I said in that yep. DEI session that there will be a woman general manager eventually, pretty soon. You know, what would that mean for the league for that to happen? I think it would be fantastic. Um, you know, we had uh, several women that participated in the accelerator program. Um, 
we have a lot of people and we have a, a one candidate in our office who I think is uh, certainly could be a general manager. Uh, and so I, I believe um, that that's, that day will come and it will come soon. I think the number one thing, it, it, it goes back to um, talent meeting opportunity. The talent is there. Uh, and the talent is getting better. They're participating in programs like this. Um, I think, you know, there's only 32 of those positions. The turnover isn't quite as great there as it is in the coaching. Um, but I think those candidates are ready. And I think it's just going to be meeting the two of those. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Am All I right. just a sexist pig for, you know, just calling BS on all this? And, you know, they, the, the DEI committee you know, says we're very close to having a one. And I would just love to know all these former black football players. Right. That, that always complain about black head coaches and black GMs. Now you're competing against women for a general manager's job. And, and I, I just don't remember any women playing football. I don't remember any of them really coaching football at a very high level. I don't remember any of them scouting football at a very high level. This is a joke to me, and I know I'm a sexist pig and every, throw rotten tomatoes at me, but that's just the way I feel. Jason, have you ever watched a football game? I'm sure you have, and just thought to yourself in the middle of the third quarter, God, it would be great if there were women GMs in this game. Because I certainly haven't. And then in two years, I guarantee you some reporter that's gonna be virtue signaling Commissioner Goodell, how unbelievable would it be to have a trans GM? Because that, that's where it's going to go. But all right, do you want to know what Commissioner Kim would have said if I was on the podium? Okay. Um, Commissioner Kim, Kim, yeah. How fantastic would it be to have female GMs? And I would just, I'd be like, bro, have you seen the female mayors around America, the way, the way they run every city into the ground? And you want them running football franchises? I mean, have you seen a lot of the – I'm going to give you a list, bro, of every female GM, especially if they're minorities. Oh, no, we don't want that. That team that team will go 1-15 every year. And and have you seen the Super City girl, Tiffany Hanyard, in Illinois? No, we're not doing that. By the way, Pink Lady Lessons out there, great YouTube – You you young, you've been doing some great work. Big fan of yours. But I'm just saying, what is the big deal here? At what point then – do I need to ask if I – not that I would, but um, – yeah, Raj, uh, can we get a crouching tiger player personnel director? I mean, this is ridiculous. This is all virtue signaling, and I don't see how in the world these ladies are qualified. And this is where when players complain about opportunities for them after their playing days, this is where I am squarely with them, Okay. But give me a break. I'm not, I'm, and again, I just I, I don't need female leadership in sports. Never cared about it. It's not important. So I don't think it's all virtue signaling. I, I think what really? it's a strategy. It's a strategy of, hey, if we can get women to think of football as a sport that's an opportunity for them, We'll get less complaints about CTE and people trying to shut down football, and we'll get more female fans. It's all about, Steve, at the end of the day, all of these sports leagues are like, Jason Whitlock and Steve Kim, we've milked them for all we're going to milk them for. They, they halfway can't stand us. They can't stand our values. We have to replace Jason Whitlock and Steve Kim, and traditional male sports fans. Because we are going so woke, so far left, so anti-American, that those guys will event, they're just, I don't watch nearly as much NFL as I used to. I don't watch as much college football as I used to. I certainly don't watch as much NBA as I used to. And so their entire strategy is, how can I replace Steve Kim and Jason Whitlock? Oh, I know. We'll get women to buy jerseys, watch games, build their weekends around watching our league. And that's how we'll replace Steve Kim and Jason Whitlock and the people that are bothered by our 
the Hold politics on. of our league. I would women really watch more football because one's running a franchise. They don't even like to watch women play basketball. I mean, they don't even like to watch women athletes on the field. You really think they're going to watch a game because one's out there in the front office? Really? I have I have a hard time. Hold, hold that. for what I'm. T- don't ask me what I think. I'm talking about what they think. And and look, they think that more women are watching because Taylor Swift is sitting in a suite watching the Kansas City Chiefs. Everything they're doing is about how can we get more female fans because we're sick and tired or or we have no use for the Jason Whitlocks and the Steve Kims of the world, the people that supported us for the past 50 years. We got to replace them. And so we're going to make a big deal about Taylor Swift and make her a part of our whole narrative around the league. And if we can find some NFL, if we can find some GM, because what they're hoping, just look at how little substance there is to Deion Sanders and coaching. But look at the TV ratings that Deion has attracted. And they are, and he just stands on the sidelines and talks after the game. He's not out on the field. And so they think if they can find the right, if they can put Mina Kimes in a GM booth, have her hold some press conferences and do some talking, then yes, they think people will show up to either hate watch the team or to root for the team because there's some attractive woman that's running the team. That, that's what they think. Oh, God. As someone that grew up as a diehard L.A. Rams fan throughout the 80s until they moved, and they're dead to me now, um, that team was owned by Georgia Frontieri. It was absolute torture. It was terrible. And, 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 and every year that went on, I said, God, dog, how come Carol Rosenblum couldn't wear a life vest? Okay? So I, it's, I'm sorry. I'm, I don't really care. Like, look, I, I think there's a woman GM who's Asian. I think his name, or her name is Kim Eng, right? That crouching tiger lady. Yeah. Um, and she's had a fairly successful GM career. Can I tell you something? I don't think our community has ever given a real damn. We don't. What sport is she in? What sport is she in? That boring baseball. I get it. But still, it's oh. just like, yeah, I know. I know. Torture, right? God, it's torture. Yeah, that ain't watch. helping anybody. What, what, what baseball? She's running a major league baseball team? Yeah, something. I, I lost track three teams ago. Kim Eng, NG. <laughs> She's still running something, I think. I don't know. Huh. I gotta look that up. Yeah. Oh, NG. Yeah, not NG. ENG. Uh, Kim. Yeah. 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 Might be related to her. Yes, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. 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 Y'all do kind of look alike. Y'all do favor. Don't we all? Uh, it's Don't American, we all? <laughs> American executive in Major Don't League Baseball. She's the former. She's the former general manager of the Miami Marlins. She was mm. the first woman to serve as general manager of a team. In the big four leagues in North America, what happened here? Did she? They fired her. She did it for two years, 2021 to 2023. Did she just get fired or what? I don't know. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe she's a driving instructor. Who knows? That that, that I doubt that though. To be honest with you. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right, well- <laughs> <laughs> You've gotten us in enough trouble. Uh, Enjoy your weekend. Uh, Thank you so much. Uh, We'll play some tomorrow. And uh, we'll enjoy us over the holidays. We'll be putting out content over the holidays. Uh, I hope you have a great holiday. I hope you have a Merry Christmas, a wonderful Christmas. Uh, That's tomorrow. We'll see you next week. Like freedom Came like a fighter Striking like a ladder Making all this moves for freedom I want freedom No negotiation My system, no relation We all just want to have freedom Sitting on the corner Never been alone I'm breaking my back for freedom Bless, we are living, get back We are receiving, all deceiving We all want to be free We want